Hello, everybody. Welcome to I Hear, I See Radio, episode 110. Uh, This is a long-running series now. We started this in 2017, and the Associated Concert Series has been going on for even longer. But uh, we can neither do concerts nor be on the radio, so this is what we've got. This is the replacement version. The recently revived I Hear, I See Radio uh, Zoom version. If you are a Patreon subscriber, you may be watching this as a video. It's patreon.com slash I hear I see. If you are not, you are probably just listening to the audio, which is also fine. Today I'm joined by Ligament, Duo, and uh, and Jean-Francois Charles. Uh, I forgot we have a chat in Zoom, so Will has suggested calling this I Zoom I see. <laughs> Before we get into our discussion, I will give you some biographical information about today's guests. Annika Kildegard, voice, and Will Yeager, double bass, are Ligament, an ensemble dedicated to commissioning new music and creating new work for their unique instrumentation. Ligament's performances are a fusion of standard and non-standard elements. Sometimes there are high heels, and sometimes there are electric toothbrushes, and sometimes both. The duo is equally at home with extended techniques, as with extra musical elements. Uh, You can find more of their stuff at ligamentduo.com. And French composer, based in Iowa, Jean-Francois Charles, is also a clarinetist and live electronics designer. He creates at the crossroads of music and technology, as in the collaborative soundtrack to, I don't know how to pronounce this name, Ziga Vertov? How's that? Okay. <laughs> Ziga Vertov's movie, The Eleventh Year, or in his musical chemistry work with scientific glassblower Benj Revis. His opera, Grant Wood in Paris, was commissioned by the Cedar Rapids Opera Theater and premiered April 12th, 2019. Welcome to the show, everybody. It's nice to see you. It's been a while since I spoke to uh, Annika and Jean-Francois. I've seen Will a little bit more recently, but... It's good to see him, too. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice to be here. Uh, how are you guys handling your uh, isolation? How's the school year going so far? Uh, yeah, thanks for having <laughs> us. Um, the school year, um, yeah, we've been, I've been teaching, and uh, the students have been um, involved, actually. Uh, it, 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 it's worked until now. Yeah. How much of that are you doing in person, Jean-Francois? Yeah, so this semester I'm doing um, everything online. I had the first week in-person meetings, but even um, the students wanted most things to be online, so I'm teaching everything online now. And um, um, what I really appreciate is that uh, some students are really uh, um, asking questions and... uh, um, trying to to yeah to have an, a real interaction even in, in a kind of a large class I have one I teach digital arts introduction it's uh, 50 students oh wow and uh, some of them really uh, ask questions and for that I'm grateful because <laughs> otherwise it would be really hard yeah it's difficult to do this uh, remote stuff this is the first time I've done this with multiple people so I'll try to uh, call on you by name so we have less of the <laughs> awkward pauses. Uh, Will, how's school going for you? Uh, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I guess it could be a lot worse than it is, which mm-hmm. I try to remind myself. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. It's just, it's just strange to sort of feel like the familiar busyness with school. Um, great, my furnace. Is That's hot. all right. We can still hear you. Yeah, okay. <laughs> great. Just a little, uh, little denoise maybe later. Um, yeah, no, it's just really bizarre to like be on this kind of like schedule that feels like an artifact from a different existence. Like you know, I'm still really busy, but just in my house and feeling busy but then also feeling like i have like very little to show for the busyness so it's just kind of a strange strange dissonance um 
and you know I'm you know I'm also like teaching some online courses, which is also very bizarre. Uh, I mean, I, I I don't I don't want to speak for you, Jean Francois, but I imagine at least something like digital arts, like everything you're doing, like the stuff that people are making, like you know, it's it's digital, right? So like can like still have a life. Like I, you know, our, our our friend Alexis is in that class, and I know she's like loving it. Um, you know, like so I, I I'm having like the opposite experience, like trying to teach a class that was actually online well well before the pandemic, but um, you know speaking to like a, a, a sea of like 25 videos that are off with like nobody participating like <laughs> at all it's just like really brutal yeah um, and like you know i found myself just like trying to like make up for it by like <laughs> i'm gesticulating wildly and like it doesn't matter like <laughs> <laughs> so I, I i mean like there are like one or two in each in each section of this of this class that do kind of respond but i don't know it's just really strange to feel like if, if the usual like feedback loop of like energy like is, is really disrupted by all of this mm-hmm. uh and annika you're coming to us from the philadelphia area uh how are things over there yeah um well i haven't even been here a whole week yet uh so i this is the first real like schedule that I have had since graduating in May. Uh, mm-hmm. I feel like I'm the black sheep of this here Zoom family. Um, I'm, you know, I've been living a very bucolic lifestyle uh, <laughs> out in Western Minnesota up until this moment, but I am currently in Philly uh, doing a project with the, the Crossing Choir um, where it's this socially distanced kind of reimagined a choral experience where um, it's taking place at a wildflower preserve and the audience members will get to walk through the area and the singers are spaced, I can't remember what, 40, 60 feet apart from one another, um, singing a new composition with text taken from uh, our personal experiences living through this weird quarantine time and being the you know, we're the most dangerous people now, the super spreaders, the singers. So yeah, it's a weird, weird new world. Yeah. Yeah. I guess I had forgotten that you uh, completed your degree this year. This is a a very strange time to be completing your studies. Uh, You said you'd just been, you know, hanging out in Minnesota since then. (laughs) Yeah. So I am, uh, I, 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 my parents have a second property. Uh, it feels so bougie to say that, but well, there you go. It's the truth. And <laughs> they, um, there's enough space there that uh, my now husband and I are living out there um, full time. Uh, my brother has been out there the whole summer. He's a carpenter and is working on doing the interior finishes on a new building project. And I mean, I've I've been doing some singing, definitely, but also I have been um, uh, learning how to, like, use a table saw and a band saw okay, cool. and, you know, how to make, like, a mortise and tenon joint and building some of my own furniture. So, yeah, I just, yeah I'm just, I'm a new woman. I'm transformed. Yeah, gaining some new skills. <laughs> yeah, that's, I'm diversifying my portfolio. <laughs> It's probably a good idea with the current state of things. Yeah. Prepping for the for the rebuild, the inevitable of rebuilding. That's exactly right. Yeah. So. Well, the reason that I have the three of you together today is because uh, there's something that's going to be released this Friday, a piece that Jean Francois composed, and uh, Will and Annika were performers, contributors to. Uh, Friday, right? That's when this is coming out? Okay. It is. Okay. And this is called, uh, is it Benedictus or Benedictus? I I couldn't say where you should put the stress, to be honest, but I just say (laughs) Benedictus. Benedictus. Okay. That's, I Uh, think that's it. Okay, great. I've listened to it. Uh, it's, it's not released to the general public yet. So I've, I've been privileged to hear the piece already. Um, where did this come from, Jean-Francois? What was your conception of this piece? So uh, I must say I wrote the piece um, quite some time ago. 
Um, a couple of influences uh, were that I was working on a cycle and uh, this cycle would have an ending that would be about um, maybe some uh, meditation ideas. So it, it led me to, to look into some religi religious texts and um, also a uh, shout out here to my wife, uh, whose name is Benedict. And Benedict oh. with an E is... Right. Um, a female uh, first name in French. So um, that's been an influence in the choice of the text, of course. <laughs> uh, and then uh, I guess I've, uh, I I've was looking into poetry and uh, uh, reading, um, I guess, great, uh, great French poets like uh, Baudelaire. So uh, when I read this, um, Finally, I, I made this mashup of Benedictus from the Roman Sanctus and, and this uh, dark romantic poem, if we want, um, which is uh, Midnight Examination and what happens on Friday the 13th or when midnight strikes, um, maybe in one's life. So, so this that, is that... the right time to be releasing this piece. It's very <laughs> Halloween-y. <laughs> yeah. Um, so um, anyway, and, and, and at the same time, uh, and that why, I'm, I'm not sure why, but at the same time I wanted to um, try to compose a real melody and a real maybe like a pop song almost. Yeah. So, and I, I, I've, I've had lots of respect for great uh, songwriters because writing a song is definitely not easy. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it, 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 it's 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 a craft that has lots of um, refinement uh, to do it well. So it it was kind of my my me trying to do that. Um, uh, so yeah, that that was the more the writing part of of the piece, and then uh, working with um, Annika and Will. Uh, ligament du um, during the last year um, as they were uh, building chamber music repertoire so I, I thought oh maybe that that would be fun to to do this uh, song with them and at the time my idea was uh, why why don't we try to perform it live maybe during I hear I see that would have been nice <laughs> that was the idea <laughs> Uh, so you sent me the poetry that you used for this. Is this uh, so? The first one is in French on the page, and the rest are in English. Are these translations or different poems? So yeah. So the link I sent you is the original French poetry by Charles Baudelaire, mm -hmm. and then on the same page you you have four different english translations of the same poem but by different translators and it's quite interesting um the first one is very uh, literal so in a way i feel close to the first one because it's it's very close to the french words mm -hmm. but then other ones take more liberties but try to to have rhymes you know it's do you do you do you translate the the words or do you, do you translate uh, the mm -hmm. rhyming or uh, the form so anyway that, that's why it's uh, actually the point is that it's not easy to translate. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. not easy to have one English version. And that's why in the end, we kept the French version. <laughs> right. Sure. <laughs> and Annika, you are comfortable with French, I presume. I mean, comfortable enough. <laughs> and Jean-Francois did coach me. So that was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. It sounds like you know what you're saying when I listen to the <laughs> recording. So. Thank you for saying that. <laughs> you pulled yeah, it well, I mean, I would say um, part of the fun of it is just like in English, there are all of these things where if you translate it directly, you don't actually get the meaning of what you're saying. Mm -hmm. So we had a good time sort of talking through these moments where you think you're saying this, but there's this other like secret hidden meaning that doesn't translate perfectly into English. And if you want to, you know, emote accurately when you're performing you need to know about this other thing mm -hmm. and this poem specifically Jean-Francois do you have any sort of like pr prior connection to this or was this something you read recently and just uh no I uh when, when I wrote the 
um, the lyrics, you know, because I, I kind of reshaped just a tab. I, I, I had just to make it work as a, as a song. I had to repeat a couple of words mm -hmm. and I had to repeat, um, I, I think, two sentences. I had no prior connection to that specific poem, mm -hmm. but uh, um, I've been interested in... in, in I, like, you know, sometimes it's just meeting or uh, actually my high school um, French teacher who was actually uh, great at uh, letting her students enjoy poetry. So, she, you know, it was like a kind of a dead poet society kind of <laughs> professor. <laughs> and she <laughs> she enjoyed um, um, Arthur Rimbaud and uh, Francois Villon and like like oh, like really very strong poetry and and she um she transmitted some some texts to us and um, that i think that was the origin of of that interest you know? okay and i don't think we we said the title of the poem um yeah so in french it's l'examen de minuit so uh, midnight examination and uh i think some some translators called it the midnight Examination of Conscience. Conscience, yes. The first translation here by William Aguilar calls it that. Uh, and it's from a collection called Flowers of Evil in English, which is a very sinister title. It, is the rest of the poetry in this collection in the same kind of theme? Well, it, it's, uh, it's strong. It's about, uh, you know, it's about life, uh, love, death, uh, and, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a kind of a masterpiece of, of, uh, uh romantic poetry. Okay, good. <laughs> a and, lot uh, of, a lot of yeah. pathos. <laughs> yeah. Uh, a little bit, let's see, let's talk about the, the music. So you've got some kind of electronic production going on and then you have Will and Annika join in. So wh wh where did you start with writing the music here? Uh yeah the well the score you know the score is is like sheet music it's it's the melody chords and 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 the lyrics and mm -hmm. that's very what traditional. It is. And uh and then so I, what I did is I I did produce the electronic music which is uh, backing track and I, I I learned a lot when I did that I, I also interacted at the time with um, a friend of mine who had more background into pop music production so I, I, I tried to learn what it meant uh, <laughs> mixing and uh, but um, yeah so uh, I did that and then then really the piece uh, the song is written and the, um, the idea is there is space in the music for an improviser and um, so the, the improvisation part the instrumental part is very open okay which is will's part correct yes mm -hmm. so annika and will when jean francois gave you the music like what does your part look like what are you reading on the score yeah, my mine was through composed, so it was it was pretty clear. There mm -hmm. are um, moments of like chant, so there's some room there for I don't know, like melismatic interpretation in particular, like ryth rhythmic interpretation in the melismas. But um, besides that, it's pretty straightforward. Okay, and there are parts of parts that you perform that are like more spoken. Is that the chanting you're talking about? No, those spoken parts are um, just like text that has to fit within a certain number of bars. Okay, got it. And that was like you're repeating the same word. There's a lot of expression in that part. Uh, let me, what were the words there? Something that starts with a B. Uh, base? Oh, Beze. So, beze, Beze, yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Beze.
well, I don't know. Can we say like a one of the seven dirty words you can't say on TV here? Um, yeah, go ahead. This isn't on the radio anymore, so we can say whatever we want. <laughs> <laughs> well, that I mean, so I was talking earlier about like, you know, hidden meaning. So uh, to to ambezeb is a kiss, mm-hmm. kind of, I guess, technically the word. But um, the sort of colloquial meaning is to say the F word, say fuck. So um, that's really what I'm saying in each of those beze. Um, OK, so. There you go. <laughs> yeah, and you you put that kind of uh, spirit behind it when you say it <laughs> over and over. <laughs> well, I have a lot of um, those feelings right now for the world, so I didn't have to dig deep to find them. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, and it it goes with um, actually it's it's on. So the the original the original um, where where the where the world is in the original text is. Um, Nous avons baisé la stupide matière. So it means uh, we we did kiss the stupid matter, uh, matter as in the material world, you know. So basically, uh, Baudelaire is, is saying we, um, it's our sin. We we, yeah. you know, he's telling everything we did poorly or we we did that was bad. And one thing is we kissed the matter, the material thing, instead of being. In, spirit i see yeah okay. it's a kind of like i don't know like we've worshipped the the stuff of the world that isn't worth our worship and so i think that's he's sort of like call it calling us out for that okay yeah and i understand uh the the feelings that you put behind that word a little better now <laughs> now that i know what the sentence itself actually is <laughs> Uh, and Will, uh, what did your part look like? What do you have on paper? Uh, well, I, I think I think Annika and I were looking at the same the same score. Mm-hmm. Um, it, I mean, it's basically a lead sheet. Um, you know, so it is it is through composed, but it's basically just you know like a sort of piano vocal score reduction kind of thing, like just the text and. Uh, with, with the melody when when there is a melody and, and chord changes um which i am of course completely ignoring uh, <laughs> uh yeah You've given so, up so, jazz that's behind you yes uh, <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so i i did sort of add some other parts like you know during the chant sections i'm just kind of like i just added a sort of a drone to the electronic sound and i i did um, also just track the bass. Um, there, I mean, there's like pretty, it's, you know, uh, mostly like the synth bass that's happening, but I did just sort of like play whole notes, like roots just to, you know, I think help add some of my acoustic sound to the mix to kind of mm-hmm. contextualize when I actually like I'm really playing. Um, so, so for me, like, it's just kind of marked like go and then <laughs> bars and then stop. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so I, I, I basically for me, it's just kind of a, a, a roadmap for when to play and when not to play. Mm-hmm. So you you see what else is happening, and then you just you just add what you want. Yeah, exactly. Okay, that was nice of Jean Francois to give you so much, you know, agency and space. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, because I remember when we he, you first brought it to us Jean Francois like months ago. It was in some rehearsal, and I, you know. <laughs> when we were, you know, at, at school for like chamber music class. Um, and I remember we, we were just talking about what it might look like to do it. And it just like, you know, just right. I have such a strong association with seeing that kind of score. Like, I mean, I, you know, I've been reading like lead sheets and changes for years. It just like, it took me, I was like, so do you want me to like play the changes or like, no, like, um, Let's play a walking bass. Uh, it's like, I mean, you know, I can, <laughs> uh, um, yeah. So, I mean, when we were, uh, revisiting it in this, con- I mean, it just like, it, I feel like it took me a second, you know, like I had to like ask Jean Francois like seven times, like so you, you just really, whatever I want. Yeah. He really? just wants you to like, be yourself. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, well, it's, but there is this sort of like kind of interesting thing about notation right just because it's like you know i see chord changes and all of a sudden you know like a certain part of like what i 
Yeah, you're trained. Training, yeah, it's like kind of kicks in. So there is, you know, just took a second, you know, just to be really clear, right? That like, oh, okay. I mean, it's still like good. I mean, it's still, a, you know, I, you know, I was like still like playing like around F, you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, it, which, which, which is good because I think it's still like, I, I mean, I feel like I was able to kind of get, get after what, what he wanted, but, um, I'm glad that I had all the information that I had in the score because it helped, you know, I'm like, well, I still want to be playing the song, even if I'm doing something that's like kind of out. Sure. Yeah. Like John Francois was saying, it's, it's kind of a pop song. So you, uh, you want to play with the pop song, not exactly like totally in opposition to it. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) I I mean, this is maybe like a bold thing to say, but it's just like, I mean, there's like a long, like, and storied tradition of like, you know, like the, the, like the guitar solo in the pop song, right? Like it <laughs> serves like a really like important, like formal function often. <laughs> I mean, so that's kind of like what how I sort of saw what I was doing fitting in. Um, basically kind of like the lead instrument, um, which I think also makes sense, right? Because, you know, kind of like the, because, you know, it's like we were, it was, it was, I don't know, like this might be something to kind of get into because like this was obviously like a ligament project, but like Anik and I never like did any of this together, you know? So it was like, we were kind of were each functioning individually, but like ultimately, of course, it's like a ligament thing. and This would have even happened if not for ligament, you know, studying chamber music, which I first saw at you know, mm-hmm. university. Um, so it was just kind of, uh, yeah. So I think that like, that kind of also like makes sense, right? Like you think about, I mean, for example, I'm thinking of like Michael Jackson and, you know, Eddie Van Halen, like that's like, you know, I think the best example of what I'm talking about, sort of like, especially like two people coming together to do something. Um, and like, of course, like, you know, those guitar solos are like just, you know, theme, you know, they're the good best doc- the yeah. best documents of their kind right yeah, yeah. And, and it's like it's the song it's part of the song it's not just like eddie like blowing on on the tune right it's like part mm-hmm. of the song so I, I don't know like that's the kind of stuff i had like rattling around in my brain as i was thinking about doing this especially mm-hmm. you know because i think I, I tracked my stuff first so like i didn't even like actually hear annika i had um secret jean francois scratch vocal takes oh so that exists somewhere it does you know maybe we should we should do like a patreon like if you like if you pay like you know when you like it's like a telethon and you you donate 50 bucks and get it you basically like pay like 50 bucks for a coffee mug Mm -hmm. somebody wants to throw i hear i see a bunch of bread maybe we'll release the secret jean francois takes the demo version (laughs) yeah that would be an interesting like rarity for you to release later when I'm singing the melody, you mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. No, I was I was exactly going to mention that. So you you started the interview by asking us about you know the the whole distance situation, but but for this project, actually, uh, I think it it, um, it it's interesting because I um, I I think it really sounds like uh, Annika and Will, you know. Uh, but indeed, it it might be the first project where they recorded their own part without listening to what the other half of the duet was doing. Right. Annika, did you record without hearing Will's recording as well, just on your own? Yep, okay. just by myself. Mm-hmm. That is interesting. So you weren't really collaborating. I guess, well, Will brought up the rehearsal in the uh, the chamber music rehearsal that you had uh, a while back. Did you have any sort of in-person rehearsal on this piece, like even in the early stages? No, none at all. Okay. No. Yeah, that uh, situation was totally just like, oh, look at this thing that I brought. And it, we, we kind of talked, like we didn't work on it. It just happened to be in our rehearsal meeting, but we didn't actually 
we i mean i think maybe we like played around with it for like a few minutes but it was like mm-hmm. very like well how would we do this maybe we could do like i hear i you know just super brainstorming not yeah, like action. preliminary yeah uh and how long ago was that exactly do you know when okay. it was that you we, first looked so, at it was it even this year <laughs> at least um, a year ago yeah I'm not sure. It, I'm sure. What which semester were we having our coachings in the choir room? I, th- I think it was last <laughs> it fall. Was maybe in the fall, yeah. In the I fall. think we used Stark um, in the spring. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's, so it was a long, long sure. time ago. So, so just to say, like when all this came back up, it was like, oh, oh, this thing. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Like it. There, it hadn't. It wasn't something that we had been like talking about like the whole time or over a long period. Of time. And we really right. planned on, on doing. The plan was to do a live version. We didn't even think about recording it. So I was uh, super lucky that both Will and Annika were interested in not only performing but also in that technology and uh, recording and what's a microphone and how do I record <laughs> myself and. So uh, that, I, I think um, I was uh, super lucky. Mm-hmm. And that's where I was going to go next is the recording process. So we've, we already know that you recorded these on your own. Um, when did you do that? When was the recordings? When did the recordings take place? Will. We'll go with Will uh, first. Yeah. So I, I was first. Um, I think it was like early, mid-July. Um, uh, yeah, because, uh, Jean-Francois and the engineer, uh, James Edel wanted us to use the same mic, I guess for like kind of tonal consistency. Um, okay. Well, I, I, and there was a moment at which like I had been given the mic and Annika was actually still here in Iowa city. There was like a brief overlap. So we'd kind of, we talked to like maybe one time about maybe like doing it together or something, but this was, I think, right. Annika and David were getting ready to move so it just mm-hmm. you know that and you know what's what's kind of funny about the isolation part is like maybe we would be able to see each other and maybe their like monitor situation would be different but if we were actually doing this in the studio like we would be in iso booths you know, right like it there mm-hmm. would still be kind of isolation for recording purposes uh yeah so I did it in I guess like early July and then I then I passed the mic to Annika mm-hmm you had to ship it. I was uh I was back in Iowa City uh okay. for the month of July. So um yeah, I mean I I think I did it in the second or third week, something like that of July. Actually, I got really I was in this like incredibly lucky situation where I was living in a house that was split into three apartments and I was living on the second floor and the first floor had been empty all year. And I sent this like pleading email to my landlords, like my building has been closed. Like, please, wouldn't you let me like go downstairs so I could have somewhere to practice? And yeah. they said yes, amazingly. So I was able to be down there and I got the microphone from Will and made the takes that I needed to make and sent them to Jean-Francois and James. And then like the day that I was doing the last recording, a woman like opened the door of the downstairs apartment and was like, what are you doing in here? I'm supposed to be cleaning this apartment for people who are moving in in like seven days. Uh And I was like, oh, fuck, like, oh oh my God, this is such a nightmare. But I had gotten all of it done. And then later that day I had to move. Like, it was such a nightmare. David and I had been using it as like a staging ground for moving. So we had like 50 boxes of our stuff, like moved down into that apartment and we had to move it all back upstairs. So, but we got the recording done. So that was it. Yeah, nice. Just in the nick of time. It, it's good. Uh, landlords tend to be really good at that, where they will communicate uh, contradictory instructions to two different people regarding the same space. It tends to happen a lot with those those people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't want to say anything bad because it was like, wow, thank like I can't believe that they let me well, use it is, that space. Yeah, it it is something to be grateful for that they... <laughs> They gave you extra space. Okay, so you recorded them on your own uh, sometime in July. Will, is that why you borrowed my mic stands? Uh, no. Um, 
I'm, I'm using one right now. <laughs> I just remembered you had it. <laughs> no, I think I borrowed yours to do like my recital in April. That's right. And that's have right. just been using them for everything ever since then. So. Well, hey. <laughs> as long as you, as long as at least one of us doesn't forget that you oh, yeah. have my uh, equipment. I won't forget. I'm not that worried about it. Okay. But, you know. uh, very, very grateful. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so then your personal recordings were done. You sent them to Jean-Francois and James. What happened at that point, Jean-Francois? Well, <clears throat> you know, I uh, I listened to the takes and uh, um, I kind of chose most of the takes. Uh, and one, one uh, with, uh, with Annika, we actually discussed the exact uh, text we wanted to I remember especially for the the chant part that is more ancient feeling and but but basically we so I I I think I did because because of the recording quality that was um, that we had I could myself do the first editing like just the voice and just the bass and mm-hmm. then I I sent uh, the different tracks to uh, James Edel uh, who is the sound engineer at the School of Music at the university. Mm-hmm. And uh, he put everything together. Uh, I I just trusted him on on that whole thing, and you know, then he he did the first mix. He shared it with me, and um, I gave him feedback. And then he he did the second version. That was the second, yeah, basically the second version he made was was the the right one. <laughs> and we kept it. Great. <laughs> and then and then. And then I I also worked on on having a design made for 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 the um, with a, a friend of mine actually who's a graphic designer so um, that also took time you know uh, so we did that in uh, August. Um, Is that the image that's on the YouTube video you sent me? Uh, yes, completely. Okay. Yeah, the so the cover Benedictus uh, and. Um, yeah, so same process. Uh, he gave me, you know, like like four first options, and then once once he he we agreed on the direction, then he made like four more versions, and and we we settled on on the final design. Yeah, <laughs> and um, yeah, that that was fun. And he's he's a great. Uh, actually, he's very sensitive to uh, letters and writing and poetry. So actually. Even when he was working on the design, he sent me other poems. <laughs> oh, <laughs> um, which uh, actually, uh, you know, I might I might u- use one of these in the future. Yeah, these are poems just similar to the work that he'd been listening to. Well, um, yeah, yeah, we kind of, uh, we kind of, uh, had, uh, yeah, it, it it was just uh, inspired by, mm-hmm. you know, and. Um, yeah. Well, that's good. It sounds like that's encouraging like further collaboration with the uh, the visual artist. And uh we'll see if we have a, a follow up on 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 that song. Well, the the thing is because I've been happy to work with uh, Ligament uh, on on that project, uh now I'm I'm thinking about um um should there be other pieces you know because if there's a benedictus should there be a kyrie and the gloria and <laughs> yeah, uh you complete... a sanctus. and yeah. Uh, yeah agnus dei or something and and they are and and <laughs> and we have a number of uh, very interesting writers in in in, in you know poets who cuz one thing i found interesting was to to put together a religious text with a poet who might or might not be religious but what what does it mean really to be religious you know mm-hmm. uh, some poets they 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 would they would fight against uh, maybe the church as an institution or against uh, beliefs but then uh, they are still interested in religion even if sure. they fight it more interested than some people who just ignore it. Mm-hmm. So I find I find that tension really, uh, really interesting. Yeah, I think that's kind of a a general thing I've observed as well. Like people, especially if you grew up uh, religious but not like super serious about it, and then later you kind of renounce that belief system and you you become an atheist. You tend to dig like 
further into the religion and like learn more about it and become more interested uh in your opposition to it so yeah that is, that is an interesting like uh type of uh expression to further explore i think uh you mentioned the takes i that was one thing i didn't ask annika and will about their recording process annika how many takes do you think you recorded well, I chunked the thing up into maybe five sections, mm-hmm. um, and I probably did three takes of each section. Okay. So it's like 15 takes total. So Something prob- like that. Probably like less than an hour of audio in total, right? I think so. Okay. That's very manageable. <laughs> How yeah. long do you think it took you overall to complete that? Just doing the takes themselves. Yeah, I mean, because, or like the whole right, recording like, thing, like setting up your recording, like getting getting everything, getting the proper settings on everything. How long do you think you spent doing that? Well, I, I certainly took, I did takes that I did not end up sending to Jean-Francois okay. just to sort of like get a sense of like mm-hmm. the room and what it felt like to sing completely alone and what it felt like to have the um, electronic track in my ear and uh, like, do I want it in my right ear or my left ear? Do I want, (laughs) and should I take one of the, you know, one of the cans off my ear so that I'm hearing yourself? Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. I probably spent five or eight hours somewhere in there. Okay. And Will, same question. How many takes did you record? Um, Not, not too many, um, because so basically, like, well, there there are two because like I I sent like mostly what I'm doing and like if you, when you listen to the track like sort of like the part that's like oh this is Will like those are like the sort of like you know solo moments um, mm-hmm. and so there if I remember correctly in the in the song there are like two like main opera you know moments for that um, there are three. The third one is like longer, you know, like sort of like double chorus vibe. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think I I did a couple of passes of like the whole song, and so like so like three like if I did three takes of the song, it's like three times however many moments I solo. Uh, but like also with like the understanding, like you know, it's really easy to just like kind of mix and match. And I so I just. I kind of, I mean, the, there was, like, definitely, I think, an overall theme in, like, what I ended up doing, you know, just, like, whatever was, you know, sort of, it, whatever I intuited about, like, I mean, they were definitely different, and I, like, kind of felt like they got better the more that I did, just in terms mm-hmm. of, like, how to, mostly how do I start and end each little moment, like, how do I, like, what, you know, because even though it's, like, basically the same sort of, uh, like, chord changes, or whatever you want to call it, um, sometimes what happens after like one time I I think maybe it's the second moment instead of like going back to like you know we're basically you know Annika is just like spitting bars um, like it goes it goes to the chant section so I need to like like try maybe like do I want to do a hard stop like real like you know put on the brakes kind of moment or do I kind of like anticipate that a little bit so I would try to like I think I tried to do a couple of different ones so Jean Francois mm-hmm. could pick whatever he thought better about you know like he liked better. But then I know like the first ones I sent, I exported in the wrong file format and like I didn't save the project file, so basically oh, it was just uh-oh. like totally ruined. Um, yeah, so, I wasn't. Whoop. I wasn't. Uh, I was kind of like restraining myself from asking those kinds of technical questions. But now <laughs> that you brought it up, uh, what file format did you export in that was incorrect? 
Uh, I think I just did a like 16-bit wave instead of like 24. Oh, okay. And that um, was insufficient for Jean-Francois' needs? No, it, actually, I was going to say, um, I think that for musical purposes, I ended up including some of the... Uh, some of the original ones. I'm okay. pretty sure I, I I ended up including some of it. <laughs> okay. Uh, so if because, you listen because closely, you may hear felt, a difference no, in the bit rate. No, you know, it just it just felt better musically. So um, you know, then you know, technically, um, lots of great hits have been made with um, um, equipment that maybe was not. You know, not as good as we have at home today. So it's, it's hard to argue every detail. Yeah. Yeah. Will did some lo fi takes before right. the proper <laughs> recordings. <laughs> but yeah, I, I was uh, actually, I was grateful to have not too many takes because uh, the more you have, uh, the, the more um, time and, and um, not just time, but, but it might get just just plain difficult to choose right yeah you you have to you have to cut some of it and the more you have the more of what you cut is probably going to be good and and sad to throw away yeah plus you know it's not i i well annika and will they're great performers live performers so Mm -hmm. we want we want some kind of uh uh, freshness for just just you know sincerity of the performance Mm -hmm. so i i kind of um um, liked that we didn't have uh, too, 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 too many. And also, it's not like recording uh, Mozart, you know, where <laughs> you, could, you could have a hundred takes and it's never perfect. Right. Uh, <laughs> and it's really not the same thing. No. Uh, so I think a lot of what we're talking about, uh, anyone who listens to our conversation would benefit greatly from actually having heard the piece so <laughs> that's going to be out friday where can they find that once that's released okay well uh yeah i was going to ask and i don't know if it's going to be technically possible actually you could you could play you know the the little bit of chant or the little like teaser audio i, I can give it to you if you if you want to include it i don't know if it's possible but uh, anyway, i have the links you sent me i can i can uh, cut that in now there's a uh, little bit of a, of a produce teaser this later. yeah Aujourd'hui, date des fatidiques, vendredi 13, nous avons malgré tout ce que nous savons, mené le train dans les rédiques. Gros buste, celui de bourgeois, Yeah, but then uh, the track it's gonna be uh, everywhere where people listen to music now, meaning it's gonna be online uh, mm-hmm. on uh, you know Spotify, Apple Music, uh, Amazon Music, uh, Deezer for French listeners today. Hey, okay, French so Deezer, listeners! People in France use Deezer. Actually, Deezer is is big in France, and I think okay. it's almost unknown here. Right, yeah, because I, I know I have some stuff on Deezer, and I like don't even know what it is. So it's yeah. good to know that, that it has a, like a French uh, market. Sp- Spotify in France is more like Deezer. Okay. <laughs> For, uh, but then, um, yeah, and it's going to be on Bandcamp as well. Great. So, and I hope people enjoy it. Yeah, I've I've enjoyed listening to it. I've listened to it a, a few times in preparation for today's discussion. So I think I think others will also enjoy it. Uh, with the time we have left, we were planning on you know about an hour. Um, what else have you guys been working on over the last few months? This is like a difficult time, as we've mentioned a few times. Uh, Ligament is very much a live performance project, and that's generally not been possible so uh annika let's let's ask you first what have you been up to the last few months what other projects besides benedictus well um so in lieu of my master's recital i made a music video out of Mm -hmm. a piece that i wrote for myself actually i took a semester of composition lessons with jean-francois and that was the result of that it was um 
I wasn't intending to make a music video, but uh, the recital that I had planned as my like capstone performance involved quite a lot of visual uh, elements. And so that was a sort of like, you know, try to make up for this thing that got canceled. Um, mm -hmm. And then uh, Will and I have been working on a piece uh, that we started uh, composing back in like December called Dontal um, that has uh, some strong dentist vibes in it. <laughs> um, and now I've we're seen incorporating some early uh, components of this piece. Yeah, yeah. Now, so we're now we're we're incorporating some tooth fairy stuff into it. So that's that's my role. So that's I'm not exactly sure when we're gonna be releasing it, but sometime in the next couple of months, I think. Um, Great. And then I've been collaborating a little bit with my mother, actually, who's a poet. Um, I made a po like a the equivalent of music video, but for poetry, poetry video of a poem 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 video of a poem of hers called "Ode to Belly Button." So that sounds lots of video stuff. Yeah, uh, poem videos. That doesn't really seem like a medium that. Uh, people really work on much i think that that would work just as well as a music video i think we should have more uh, poem yeah. videos so i'm i'm glad you're blazing a trail there well, <laughs> annika ju just uh let me interrupt but you have to mention the title of your own music video you, you didn't say the title so uh how do we oh, find yeah. your your own music video on youtube thank you yeah my my music video is called how to be glamorous Okay. So you'll learn a thing or two. Yeah, search for how to be glamorous on YouTube. Let me see if that works. Uh, it's not on the first page. So if I include your name. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm competing with a lot of like beauty <laughs> vloggers. So <laughs> yeah, a lot of people are uh, trying to be glamorous. Yeah, so. you're going to have to gonna have to search for my name too. I think. Yeah, yep, it's there. Uh, I'll, maybe I'll include a link to that when I release this episode Thanks, of the show. <laughs> yeah, Will, gotta... what have you uh, been up to the last few months? Oh, God. Um, I guess a lot, um, which, like, is not good. Like, I've... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, as you mentioned earlier, like, you feel really busy, but you don't feel like you uh, are reaping any of the benefits of that. Uh, that's how I feel. I don't know if it's actually reality. So that yeah, that's also just another layer to the sort of like this bizarreness of, of this moment. Um, I don't know. Like, so I, I did a recital in April um, and it was, you know, my last degree recital and it was like all music that I really wanted to play. Um, and it was just me alone. So it was a little easier for me to like, just, you know, re realize that. Um, mm hmm you know, like Annika had all these like really cool things in the mix that like just weren't going to really be, you know, like lighting and like staging and all these other elements. Um, so I just, and also this was, you know, like early on in, in the days of uh, this, you know, what we do now on the internet. So I was like, this will be the, my sort of like catalyst for like learning how to use OBS yeah. and, you know, just kind of like deal with all the streaming stuff. <sighs> Um, and that was a really, and that, that recital was a really positive experience. Um, you know, it went okay, but like m more importantly, like a lot of people tuned in and, you know, it kind of felt, I mean, basically I felt like I feel after a live show afterwards. So I was like, oh, okay. Like this thing isn't so bad. Cause this was right when everybody was like first, like I'm streaming and it sucks or I'm streaming and it's great. You know, everybody has a totally different relationship to it. Right. So I was like, oh, this is something that felt good. So like, let me like do a bunch of this and so like I booked just so I did a bunch of recitals and play you know like doing sets on online festivals and stuff and and it was I guess good to be doing stuff because after the recital like I wasn't really practicing yeah <laughs> so but I was at least like kind of playing you know gigs so to speak like once every like two weeks so I was kind of like playing enough that at least I was like well okay I'm not practicing like I don't but I'm not going to feel bad about it because I'm still I'm not like totally like getting worse I'm at least playing enough mm -hmm. um I don't know. And then I like, basically every time I did one, it like felt worse. <laughs> and then in, and then the, in July, yeah, July. The high lot, wears off. Yeah. You're yeah. chasing the dragon. 
<laughs> exactly. It's, you know, what, what's the next level? Like, what's the, you know, the harder drug? Um, <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Um, <laughs> I don't know, but like that, I, I basically, I was like trying to like manufacture activity and, um, I kind of burnt out in July mm-hmm. and then school started. So that's, that's still been like a, a thing to navigate. Um, but I, I mean, but like more positive, I mean, I, I don't regret anything, but just to say like, it's been, I, I don't know, like it's been cool to like find ways to continue to be doing stuff and like make things over, over in this period. But I, I don't know, like there are new and like sometimes hidden costs just in terms of like energy and i think everybody it's not like a secret to anybody but it's kind of i think personal um how it manifests um uh but like a lot of other people too have been kind of like going back into the the archives and like just putting stuff out um uh, our mutual friend uh, gabby vanek and i put out a tape a few months ago um, called it's Ghost on my Actions. shelf over there. Ooh, nice. <laughs> uh, that's on Bandcamp. Um, mm-hmm. That a lot of people have checked out. Um, we are almost out of tapes, so if you're listening and you want a tape, you better snag it quick. Mm-hmm. Um, like they might, you know, assuming that people people only buy music once a month right now um, on Bandcamp Fridays, which so is this it, Friday, by the way. So yes. when uh, Benedictus comes out, you'll also be participating in Bandcamp Friday. Bandcamp is the only platform that gives a shit about artists, so that's where you should buy your music. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so that that was great, right? It's the first time I've actually released like a physical product, um, you know. So there's like something that feels kind of good about that. It's so funny, like people who like you know sort of like inside a certain scene are just like all about tapes, but then like there are a lot of people who are like what you're putting out a tape like i don't even have a tape player so it's just kind of funny to like kind of straddle that Mm -hmm. Uh, i put out a solo thing um i think a month ago um some recordings i've had lying around for a couple of years of pieces that people wrote for me that i premiered like while i was at university of Iowa. i mean i'm still there like but um uh, we're all we're all there right now (laughs) Uh, so, so just to say, I don't know, like, so, so that, I don't know, and that, that's been, you know, people have been listening to that. It's been, you know, received well. So, so that, 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 that has been gratifying. So I, I can't just like be like super negative. I mean, like that, that's been good to do. Uh, Jean-Francois and I just made some recordings a few weeks ago that I, you know, will be out in the world in, in some way soon. Um, a piece that he wrote for me a long time ago, um, or like, I don't know, a year and a half ago <laughs> called Petrified. That will be. Uh, we made a video that will be sort of uh, premiered, I guess, for the Splice or Festival that's happening in a couple of weeks. Um, and uh, yeah, I, 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 and I'm trying to do my dissertation, which is all a bunch of new pieces, including Petrified. Uh, so I have, I guess, music to learn. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's good. You've been uh, keeping pretty active. I. Uh... Reviving the I Hear I See radio series has kind of been uh, an effort to motivate myself to actually do things. So uh, hopefully it will have uh, that kind of effect on me. I do feel inspired talking to you guys about things that you've done. So thank you for that. Uh, Jean-Francois, what have you been up to the past few months aside from Benedictus? Um, yeah, well, as as we said, uh, we 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 could record recently, so I'm I'm excited about that that video coming up. Um, uh, I had a a, a new um, solo for tuba, no electronic music, just tuba. That just was acoustic, Sunday. Just acoustic, just tuba. Like like just just a plain acoustic instrument. Yeah. <laughs> and um, David Mercedes uh, is fantastic, and he did a. a, a great job on on sunday for the the premiere of that it's it was streamed like it was streamed uh it's going to be on youtube of the school of music uh, soon <laughs> uh and now you know i have in mind my the, the next things and um i've actually been working on finding the right poets that would go with that kyrie and that agnus dei because now i want to work on that yeah, you've got to complete your mass. This will be like yeah. A... So I'm I'm working about I'm I'm thinking about um, a special kind of missa brevis or something. 
<laughs> this would be like and, a big milestone in your career. <laughs> and you say, so, okay, you say you were inspired, but, you know, I also want to thank you for being uh, an activist. And oh. uh, we, we all know you've been an activist for many <laughs> things, actually, in life. And you, 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 you've been a, um, an activist for music and for live music. And so thank you for that. And that's yeah, really thanks. great. <laughs> thanks. I appreciate yeah, the absolutely. recognition. Uh, I hope that live music can exist again at some point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, On I that actually, note, though, uh, yeah, well, go ahead. I was, I was actually walking around with our, our friend Zachary yesterday morning. We ended up over at City Park with that weird, like, Shakespeare theater. Oh, yeah. And we, we did, like, a, an, an, Olive, an Oliveris piece there for IRSC, and I was like, well, I mean, it's outside. Like, We could stage. probably use it, I was, yeah. just, I was actually like, I don't know, maybe... And like, you know, we could like distance the chair, you know, I don't know. Like everybody's got to like decide what they're comfortable with, but yeah, I don't yeah. know. I, I got really excited because I was like, I can imagine like a safe performance here, you know? And I, I must say, I, I was uh, really excited um, to go to a, a chamber music concert on Saturday. So local um, Iowa City based uh, Red, Red Cedar uh, Chamber Music yeah, yeah. Ensemble. They, they had a Facebook event, but they, they had a, a live event on Saturday. So when, when I saw that, I saw, oh, I'm, I'm going, I'm definitely going. And, uh, you know, it was just a duet, uh, cello and violin, and um, uh, a very small audience of about 20, um, 20 people in their backyard. And it was just great. <laughs> yeah, and everybody... Everybody respected each other's boundaries, so yeah, completely. Yeah. You know, uh, with a distance chairs and masks, and uh, but but it was still great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Although yeah. now it's gonna gonna coming um, like like winter is coming, so I yeah. don't know how right. that that's gonna work for for outside performances. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's like we're just kind of figuring out like how to do this, and now we're <laughs> it's gonna be too cold in like a week. Yeah. Heat lamps. Uh, <laughs> I, just, I feel like we have to sort of also acknowledge uh, public space one um, mm. doing a lot of like I mean off, they're already like Iowa City heroes um, I feel like it took me a shocking amount of time to like get hip but um, they, they've done in the last like yeah. month or two there have been a couple of really good um, outdoor sort of performance things that I've been fortunate to take part in um, that were like done safely and yeah it's just to just to like you know keep the fires of hope alive. <laughs> yeah, which is uh, it's it's been a struggle as we all know. <laughs> so I think uh, that's probably a good place for us to wrap up. We've got you know just a a little bit of hope for the future. We can end on a, a kind of a qualified positive note. Uh, thank you all for uh, your time uh, this morning. It's been nice to. Uh, reconnect with those of you who i haven't uh i haven't seen your faces in a long time or heard your voices so that was uh that was nice um you can find all of ligaments stuff at ligamentduo.com uh, and then you each have personal websites as well which i think you can find on that page somewhere yeah all right <laughs> Every, everything is like you know Leech, like it's all 10 times from Sunday, yeah, interconnected, yeah. Uh, and then Jean Francois, he also has uh, both an English and a French version of his website. Uh, I, I assume most of my listeners are more inclined to the English version, which is Jean Francois Charles.com. Uh, I'll link all of this stuff, of course, in the description of this episode so it's easy to find for everybody. Uh, you can also find all the I Hear I See stuff at I Hear I See.com. I mentioned this at the top of the show, but if you uh, subscribe to the Patreon, patreon.com slash I hear I see for as little as $1 per month, I will be putting the video versions of these podcast interviews on there. Uh, audio only is free. Video is now, it costs money because we don't have anything else to charge money for. And I would like to be able to pay people to do stuff. So if, if that's something you'd like to participate in, patreon.com slash I hear I see, uh, Annika, Will, Jean-Francois, anybody have any parting thoughts before we conclude today? 
Everybody go vote. Oh, sure. Yeah, you can do that. Uh, I have a special election in Coralville today, so I get to like do a special fancy vote where probably only a couple hundred people will vote. So, wow. <laughs> so my decision matters a lot more in this one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, yeah, just, let's, thanks uh, for having us, Justin. Yeah, yeah, thanks, and have a good one, and hopefully we have live I Hear I See soon enough. Yeah. Yes. Someday. I won't put any dates in stone yet, but hopefully soon. In quotes, soon. Have a good one, everybody. Thanks again to Annika Kildegard, Will Yeager, and Jean-Francois Charles. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs>